If you want to build a single page application, you're probably going to need a router. So why don't we start reviewing that entire workflow from scratch? Now I'm going to use Laravel as a backend, but again, you can use anything you want here. Let's call the app stream, something like that. Okay, let's CD in there and open this in Sublime. So we have a fresh Laravel 5.4 app. We're not going to use uh, Laravel Elixir. So I'm going to go to my package.json file and get rid of some of these references. Next, I'm not going to use Lodash or jQuery or Gulp or Bootstrap SAS. Okay, so let's go ahead and install this. Give it just a moment. But then we also want to pull in Laravel Mix like we reviewed before. And remember, you can use this even outside of Laravel. It doesn't require Laravel at all. Okay, great. Next, I'm going to copy the uh, setup files within that Laravel Mix repo. So Laravel Mix, setup. Let's just grab both of the files within there and then copy them to my project root. So that'll give me my webpack.mix file. And then if I do need to override any of the uh, webpack.config, I can of course do that, but we won't need to. So here, my setup will be that I want to compile resources, assets, js, app.js to the public directory and then my SAS to the CSS directory. So that'll be resources, assets, SAS, app.scss. Okay, great, that part's done. So let's take a look at what we have here. Within SAS, so for SAS, we're gonna remove a few of the boilerplate things here. Uh, no variables to speak of, and we're not using Bootstrap. Okay, so nothing there. One thing I will do, actually, is set some padding top on the body just so when we do add content, it's not right up against the edge. Okay, cool. Uh, next up for the JavaScript. So once again, we are compiling app.js down to the JS directory. So if we take a look at that, here's what Laravel includes out of the box. So uh, really quickly, we reference a bootstrap file. That pulls in Lodash. We're not using any of these things here, but here we go. So we pull in view. We then pull in Axios. We set some headers. And then we have some boilerplate for echo, which we are not using. So that looks pretty good. Uh, but next, I'm going to use ES 2015 modules. So I could say import view from view, and then we could assign it, like so. And then let's do the same thing for Axios. Now, again, we're assigning it to the window just to make it readily available uh, anywhere in our project that we might need. OK, so that takes care of our bootstrap file. We can go ahead and import that. Next, I know we're not going to have an example.view component. So what I'm going to do, I, I would keep a components folder in real life, but I know we're going to have some pages here. So I'm going to change this to views and this one to home.view. And we'll say home page. OK, so here's our entry point. We pull in Bootstrap. Bootstrap pulls in view and Axios and assigns them to the window. And then we build up a new view instance and bind it to the element with an ID of app. So let's do this. Uh, let's go ahead and compile everything down. And like we've discussed before, if you don't like seeing all these uh, modules, you could say hide modules. And you could also say show me the progress as you are compiling. Cleaner. So next, if we're building a single page app, that means we're going to let the, the routing take place on the front end. And then the back end is mostly going to be uh, your API. So we'll, we'll let welcome be our entry point. And let's see. We can get rid of a lot of this junk here. My app. And then how about this too? All right, so we're just going to have a div with an ID of app. And then why don't we do this? Let's throw this into a layout file. So layouts, let's call it maybe master. This will be our master page where I will spit that out. So now welcome, we can get rid of this entirely, and we'll just say that we are extending layouts.master. Okay, so just a little bit of Laravel specific setup here, but mostly we're compiling app.js down. We are referencing our master page where we will import the compiled file. And then also let's do the same thing for the style sheet. So now let's set up our routing. Luckily, we can pull in a first party router view router and save it to our dev dependencies list. Now, let's close these out. Within my JavaScript folder, it would be nice if I have one file specifically for my routes. So I'm just going to make sure that works. 
Now we import the view router that we just installed. And ultimately what I want to export is a new instance of the view router. So we have to give it the routes and then there's lots of options, but we're gonna stick with that for now. Okay, so routes is going to be equal to an array of, well, routes, like this. So for example, you can of course refer to the view router uh, documentation, but mostly you're gonna have a path to match. You can use wildcards and, and most of the things you would expect will be there. And then you also want a component that corresponds to that route. So why don't we be quick and just use require here? And we're gonna go into our views directory and grab the home.view. Now Laravel Mix will allow you to omit the .view syntax, but if you have your own setup here, you might need to be explicit about that. All right, so now we're saying, when we match the home page, essentially, uh, we want a home component to correspond to that. And that will be equal to this template here. So let's go ahead and export this module. And I think this is fairly clean. Now, whenever you need to add a route in the future, you visit routes.js, and then you add a new one here. Pretty simple. But we're not pulling this in anywhere yet. We can do that within app.js. We'll say import the router from the routes file, and then we will pass that to our root view instance. So we could do the long form, or as you know, uh, likely know, with ES2015, we can use the shorthand, and this would translate to router, router. So this is looking pretty good to me, but there is one thing. Yes, we're pulling in the routes, and we've defined them here, and we are assigning it to the view instance, but we haven't yet told Vue about this plugin. So we can do that within the bootstrap file here. At the top, let's pull in view router, and then let's clean this up. We can say view.use view router. So this is our way of saying, view, I want you to use this plugin. Now, here's the way this works. If we go to our master page, because we pulled in view router, we can now use this router link component. We give it a two, which is basically the path, and then we can give it the, uh, the name of the link. And this will ultimately be expanded to an anchor tag. But it is recommended that you use the router link component rather than manually creating the anchor tags uh, for a couple reasons related to how the URLs are built, if you're using uh, the history API or not, uh, things like that. So let's have a link for home as well as maybe about. Okay, let's give it a shot. So I will compile everything down again and then switch over to Chrome. And there we go. So we have our two separate links, one that goes to the home page, and you'll notice that a view will dynamically populate the href. But we also have one for the about page. Okay, so you can see that we are updating the URI here, but we don't see the, the template associated with them yet. And that's because we have to explicitly say, where should that go? Let's just put it down here for now. The router view should be placed here. So now, if we come back and give it a refresh, here's the home page. And again, this is corresponding to this right here. So here's home, and if we go to about, we don't have one yet. Let's go ahead and set that up. A new file called about.view. Let's steal from home, and then we'll say the about page. All right, let's compile it all down again. All right, so we're gonna register a new route, and we'll just duplicate it. And we're gonna say, when we visit slash about, I want that to correspond to the about component. So yeah, you can see with view router, we are simply associating endpoints with one-off components. So let's go ahead and compile that down again. Come back to Chrome, give it a refresh, and now we have about, and now we have home. You have an SPA here, you know? It's not doing much, but it fits the definition. But now let's take it a bit further. Uh, obviously this doesn't look really good at all. And one thing I see right off the bat is when I'm on the about page, the link doesn't give me uh, any feedback. Now what you'll see though, if we inspect this, is view will apply a class of router link active if you click on it. So notice it gets removed. If we click on it again, it gets added. But also you can see that because view by default uses like a, an inclusive matching uh, pattern, it's going to assume that any URI that starts with a forward slash is the active one. And that's definitely not what we want for the home page. Uh, so we can fix this by going back to our master page and we're gonna add the exact attribute. And that means the match should be exactly this. 
So if we give it a refresh now, you'll see that yes, about is selected, but home is not. But if we click on home, then it's added. So this is what we want here. So yes, we could just add a class for this and make it bold or however you want your active class to be. Uh, but also if you want that to be something else, like you're using Twitter Bootstrap or Bulma and they already have a class name like is active, uh, we can override this. And we're gonna do that within our routes.js file. Now the property we want is link active class. What should that be? We're gonna use is active and compile that down again. Really though, we should be running a watcher here. Uh, when you do watch, it will recompile in 20 milliseconds. For example, let's add a space here and you'll see it recompiled in 11 milliseconds versus uh, you know one or two seconds. Anyways, if we give it a refresh, now you'll see it's using the is active class. So why don't we do this? Uh, I often like to use Bulma. So let's go to bulma.io and we will, we could pull it in through NPM, but it's just as fair to reference it on a CDN here. So back to Sublime, I'm gonna go to my master page and then I'm gonna reference it here, like so. So now if we come back and refresh, we should immediately see some changes and we do. So if I click on about, ah, it's still not displaying the way we want. And you know what, that's because for Bulma, they're gonna want us to use a list item. So if we wanna override this, here's what we could do. We could put the anchor tag within it, something like this, and you can just leave the href off and uh, view router or view will uh, add that for you. So we're gonna have about here. Next, we can specify what the tag should be. So in both cases, the tag should be a list item. Okay, so now if we give it a refresh, you can see that we are using list items. And once again, the anchor tag was populated for us. All right, so let's do this. Let's go back to the Bulma documentation and let's just steal some layout here. So for a hero, there should be a section for navigation. Let me find it. Just a second. Yeah, this looks pretty good to me. So this is what we want. So I'm gonna copy all of the HTML there, come back to Sublime, and you know what? I know this is gonna get messy, so I'm gonna throw this within a layouts.header partial. All right, resources, views, layouts, header.blade, and paste that in. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look. We have the, let's come back. We have the header section at the top and we'll just say, my stream is the name. Here is your, your hamburger for mobile mode. Then you have home example, that's all this stuff up here. Okay, so next, if we scroll down, you have the title and the subtitle, which is this. So once again, we'll say my stream and then Laracast demo. And then finally down here, the hero footer, this will be the links that we make dynamic. So because I know that uh, for any application, I will want to edit the navigation quite a bit, actually, uh, I'm gonna move that into its own partial as well. Layouts.nav, and then create it. Resources, views, layouts, nav. This is mostly just me organizing things. Uh, you can do it however you want. Okay, so now that we have all of our links here, what we can do is go back to master, and all of this junk, this can now go into the nav partial like so. And whoops, that should go to slash about. But anyways, let's see what we have now. Let's go to our master page, clean this up. So we import Bulma, we import our compiled CSS file. We have our header, and that's gonna be the full hero section. That will import the navigation area. And this is where we can register our navigation links. Now, if we come back, the component associated with each URI will be spit up there. So let's do this. Let's just have the, the div with an ID of app wrap everything, like so. And then here, we're gonna have a section. And then within here, our container. And that will be where we put it, just to give it some, uh, some spacing. We're gonna center it on the page, basic HTML stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at this in the browser. We'll give it a refresh. We have that spacing at the top, and you know what? It looks like we didn't need that after all, that padding top. And that recompiles, so if we give it a refresh now, and there we go. Okay, so now here's the key thing for you to understand. If we come back to that master page, the router view, yeah, this is associated with the template for each one. So there's the home page, and we specified in the routes file that that component should be associated with this URI. But if the URI is slash about, 
then we want the about component here to be associated. Then we spit out that content, that compiled content, right here using the router view component. So that means if we give it a refresh, if I click on about, now we're on the about page. If we click on home, now we're on the home page. Now, now it does change the opacity here, but one thing we could do is add the is boxed class, and Bulma will recognize this and treat it more like a uh, traditional tab. So home, about, exactly what we want. So now we're mostly done for this episode, but let's go through the workflow of adding a new route. At this point, all the setup is done. So we're just going to define it like you always would. And we'll say, if you visit slash contact, that will load to the contact component. Let's add contact.view. Once again, steal a little bit. And then we'll say the contact page. All right, and that should do it. So now let's just spit out a link like you always would. This will be to slash contact, and the anchor tag should go to slash contact. And we're done. So we come back to Chrome, we give that a refresh, and now we have a contact page. All instant. Now, at this point, yeah, if you need to fetch things from the database, you can still do that, and you're going to do that through AJAX calls. So for example, if the about page needs to fetch something from the database, yeah, you could listen for mounted or even created. And then here is where you will perform your AJAX request. You fetch the data, you save it, and then you render it out wherever you need to. It's as simple as that. All right, so we'll continue chipping away at this, but make sure this initial workflow feels comfortable to you and more importantly, makes sense.